Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on fetal growth restriction. Fetal growth restriction is defined as a failure of a fetus to achieve its genetic growth potential. And this usually results in a fetus that is small for gestational age. This SGA means that the weight of the fetus is less than the 10 centile for its gestation compared to other babies at the same gestational age. And it is important to remember that most SGA fetuses are constitutionally small and are not compromised. So to define as fetal growth restriction, it indicates that there is a pathological process causing the restriction of the growth rate of the fetus. So the causes of fetal growth restriction are grouped into two main categories. First category are the factors that directly affect the intrinsic growth potential of the fetus. Whereas the, two, the second category is external influence that reduce the support for fetal growth. So if you look at the first group, the factors that reduce the fetal growth potential include chromosome abnormalities, genetic syndromes, and fetal infections can also alter the intrinsic fetal growth potential. Whereas the external influences that affect fetal growth can be subdivided into maternal systemic factors and placental factors, which is placental insufficiency. So maternal undernutrition is globally the major cause of FGR. Low maternal oxygen saturation, which can occur with cyanotic heart disease or at a high altitude, will reduce the fetal oxygen levels and also fetal metabolism. Smoking can also increase the amount of carboxyhemoglobin in the maternal circulation, and this will reduce the amount of oxygen available to the fetus, thus causing FGR. A wide variety of the drugs, other than tobacco, can also affect fetal growth, which includes alcohol and cocaine listed here. And it happens probably through multiple mechanisms that affect the fetal enzyme sy systems, placental blood flow, and also maternal substrate levels. So besides these maternal factors, in developed countries, the most common cause of FGR is due to poor placental function. And it can be secondary to inadequate trophoblast inversion of the spiral arteries. This will result in a reduced perfusion of the intracotyledon space which in turn leads to abnormal development of the terminal villi and impaired transfer of oxygen and nutrients to the fetus. And sometimes, reduced perfusion can occur from other conditions, such as maternal sickle cell disease and antiphospholipid syndrome. So multiple gestation can also result in the sharing of the uterine vascularity, which will cause a reduction in the blood flow to each placenta of the two or more fetuses. Whereas on the fetal side of the placental circulation, abnormalities of the umbilical cord, such as a single umbilical artery, is also associated with FGR. So that's for the causes of fetal growth restriction. Next, we will look at the different types of fetal growth restriction, which can be divided into symmetrical growth restriction or asymmetrical type. For symmetrical, the definition is the baby is symmetrically small, whereas for asymmetrical type, the head of the fetus will be larger than the abdomen. In symmetrical type, there are fewer cells but normal size, whereas asymmetrical type, decrease in cell size but less effect on the total cell number. And one thing we have to take note is the growth parameters. For symmetrical type, the whole body of the fetus, which include the weight, the head, and the femur length all are below 10 centile. Whereas for asymmetrical type, the head and length, the head circumference and femur length are preserved. So only the abdominal circumference is reduced. Ponderal index is the ratio of the body weight to the length. So it will be low in the asymmetrical type. For the etiology of both the two types of FGR, symmetrical FGR is mainly due to genetic disorders whereas asymmetrical FGR is mainly due to placental vascular insufficiency and it can be due to maternal causes such as chronic hypertension, preeclampsia, 
renal disease, cyanotic heart disease, and many other causes that could reduce the placental vascular function. So overall, the prognosis for symmetrical type, it is a complicated neonatal cause and there is poor prognosis. Whereas for asymmetrical type, it is uncomplicated and the prognosis is better compared to the symmetrical type. So for investigation of fetal growth restriction, so overall the detection of a small for gestational age infant will contain two elements. First is the accurate assessment of the gestational age and second the recognition of fetal smallness. So an early measurement of the fetal crown ram length before 13 weeks plus 6 days gestation or an early measurement of the head circumference between 13 weeks plus 6 days and 20 weeks is the method of choice for confirming the gestational age. And thereafter, the most precise way of assessing fetal growth is through ultrasound biometry, where there are four parameters that can be noted, which include bioperitoneal diameter, head circumference, abdominal circumference, and the femur length of the fetus. And this ultrasound biometry is serially done at intervals of usually four weeks, and not less than two weeks. So moving on with other investigation, we should clarify whether the baby is small and is clarify whether the baby is normal and simply constitutionally small, or whether it is a fetal growth restriction. So a comprehensive ultrasound examination of the fetal anatomy should be made, looking for fetal abnormalities that may explain the small size of the fetus. Even if the anatomy appears normal, if there is presence of symmetrical growth restriction with normal amniotic fluid volume, it actually raises the suspicion of a fetal genetic defect, and the parents should be counseled accordingly. Investigations that can be offered are amniocentesis and rapid fetal cryotype to look for any genetic defects that could have caused the symmetrical fetal growth restriction. So whereas for asymmetrical fetal growth restriction, with small abdominal circumference, oligohydramnios and high umbilical artery resistance, the doctor should suspect a case of utero placenta insufficiency and the investigation that can be done is umbilical artery doppler. For management of fetal growth restriction, the most important part of the management is the timing of the delivery. The crucial decision is the timing of delivery. So in cases where the FGR is diagnosed prior to 34 weeks and in a situation where the fetus is well, amniotic fluid index is normal, then we can postpone the delivery until the fetus achieves lung maturity. In cases where the FGR is diagnosed at term, then prompt delivery is contemplated. Whereas, irrespective of the period of gestation, if the FGR is diagnosed with an abnormal Doppler studies or with oligohydramnios, then the fetus is delivered immediately. And caesarean section may be the choice of the mode of delivery if there is severe FGR with or without abnormal CTG of the fetus. And the fetus is susceptible for intrapartum hypoxia and also acidemia. Thus, these conditions should be anticipated and proper management should be prepared. So that's all for this video. Thank you.